Hey guys, it's Kathleen with Thrifty Bridges and I've got another What's Sold video for you. Um, it's been a while since I've done a What's Sold video. Um, however, when I went out thrifting this weekend, everything really sucked and I didn't buy anything. Zero, zip, nothing. So here we are, What's Sold. Um, things were moving really good for me in the beginning of January and now they have kind of died like out of nowhere. I think I've maybe sold three items in this week and it's I mean that's crazy slow for me I have over 700 items listed closing in on 800 so usually I sell at least three or four items a day but it's just been dead let me know in the comments if you're finding the same thing if everything's really just kind of at a standstill and I know after Q4 it is bound to slow down a little bit but right now it's dead 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 so I'm going to jump into it. The bulk of these sales are from eBay. Even though I do have a bunch of Macari and Poshmark sales, they will likely go on another video. So the first thing was this vintage Stanley Tools set. It was an 18 piece set. I picked this up at a yard sale for only $3. This sold only a couple of days after having listed it. I would definitely, definitely pick these up again. It seems like these vintage style tools with the yellow um, plastic handles, um, and if memory serves, there might even be a little bit of red, those are a desirable item. So um, definitely worth picking them up if you see them out and about. You know I love to pick up vintage pantyhose. Vintage pantyhose just really flip quickly for me. I was at an estate sale and grabbed these three pair of JCPenney um, pantyhose and they all sold one nearly right after the other. I think there was like a two week lag between the last pair selling. So definitely grab vintage pantyhose. These were JCPenney brands, which are nothing, you know, spectacular. They didn't sell for a huge amount of money, but they did sell quickly and I only paid 50 cents a pair. So I sold two pairs of these um, support sheer colored new in the package. And then the last pair was a JCPenney navy blue pair. So. Definitely something to keep your eye out for. Um, I never pass over pantyhose anymore. Next, I grabbed this um, corduroy jacket and it had a hood on it. It is a vintage style. I grabbed this at an estate sale for only a dollar and it sold for $22. At an estate sale, I grabbed a bunch of Dawn dolls. I wanna say I grabbed eight in total and they are the topper toy brand of Dawn dolls. I don't know if that matters or not, but these were all topper and these all moved really quickly. I've got two left and I kind of think they're the two sucky ones, so I might be stuck with them for a while, but the others sold pretty quickly and all sold for decent money. So this one is Maureen and she is head style A11C and that does matter with the Dawn Dolls. So what you do is you just kind of lift up their hair and there'll be a letter and number on the back of the neckline. And that's what you use to identify them. And that made it really, really easy for me to be able to distinguish between who's Dawn, who's Maureen, who's this one, who's that one, because there's a following to these Dawn Dolls. And so it's really easy if you plug in that head mold to be able to see information about her like her name and where she was made because some of them are made in Hong Kong some of them are not made in Hong Kong and so their value changes based upon those details so this was a 11c I paid a dollar for her and she sold for $24 and then right after her this Connie doll who is a head mold k10 she sold for $18 um so I'm telling you, I, who would have thought that these teeny tiny dolls that I had like a ton of when I was a kid, wish I would have kept them. How many times do you say that about your vintage toys? Um, so anyway, another bolo, be on the lookout for Dawn Dolls. All right, I sold this Nintendo 64 um, in the Atomic Purple controller style for $150. Karen grabbed this at a yard sale for $5. That is it. It took a hot minute for me to be able to test it because I didn't have any games, so I finally just bought a game. Then I didn't realize that it doesn't work without a rumble pack, so I had to buy a rumble pack. So probably all in, I'm about closer to the $10 mark for this, um, the $5 that we paid, and then um, the rumble pack and the game were that, that much money, but probably closer to $12. 
So let's say $12 cost of goods flipped that into $150. It was listed about a month before it finally sold. This was a really big surprise to me. Um, I'm not even gonna try to appropriately pronounce this. Eve Delorme? I think that's how you say it. I don't know, I'm not really good with my French. But this is a package of boudoir shams and I found it under a pile of sheets at an estate sale. It was that estate sale where I was getting all of the vintage like striped sheets. So I saw this and I thought, oh, I mean for a dollar, I'll take a stab at it. I didn't look up any comps. When I got home, I was shocked to see that this is a really desirable brand. It sells really high. There were a lot of types of items like this that were different styles or different sizes that were selling even higher than this. So I was super stoked for, to take a $50 offer. I think I had it listed for 60 or something like that. Took an offer of $50. It sold within less than a week of having listed it. So another thing to keep your eye on. Along with that um, Nintendo 64 bundle from the yard sale, Karen scored this Hang Time Super Nintendo game. It is new and in the package. As far as I know, it is new and in the package. Somebody on Macari was actually helping me with this a little bit, and he said that it is potential, that there is the potential for this to not be a new in the package item because a lot of game resellers will re shrink wrap it. And he said it's very hard to tell. So I just noted all of that in the description and I reduced the price a little bit, but it still sold for $35 and we're maybe a dollar into this item because we got all of that stuff for 15 bucks. So super, super stoked with that flip. Um, that was listed a little bit of a while and I did field a couple of really low ball offers, but probably was not listed much more than three, maybe four weeks tops. Okay, if you remember, I went to an estate sale and I got a ton of vintage Ralph Lauren items. Not the one with the scarves, this is the one with the clothes. She had a bunch of sweaters. I also picked up two Benetton sweaters that were um, vintage, one of which still had its tags on. So I picked up this silk linen blend cardigan there. It was in a size small, which is not my favorite size to sell, but it was gorgeous. It is, um, it was a beautiful V-neck cardigan. Um, I paid $3 for this item and it sold for $24. I grabbed this Parrot Mambo drone pilot and play set. And I think it has a cannon and some, and a claw, which apparently are very desirable when you're talking about drones. I don't know anything about drones. Um, but when I looked at it, it looked to be new in, in the package and the seller only wanted $15 for it. So I thought that was worth taking a stab at. It was before Christmas, so I knew it would move before Christmas and it did. Um, I took a couple of low ball, I, I fielded a few low ball offers, but I kind of stuck to my guns and it eventually did sell for $70. I had it listed for $95, so I did come down a little bit, but, um, but people were offering me like, 35 and 40 dollars and there was just no way I was going to go that low so Karen picked up this pair of black fry boots they are in the Phillips style um, and they are riding boots in a size 8 and she got them at a yard sale for seven dollars so this is a beautiful pair of boots the leather is just what you would think of with fry boots I mean it was gorgeous it was soft it was supple all the things and then when I was going to photograph it, I noticed on the sole of the boot, there was like a spot. So I, I went to go get it out. And when I went to get it, get it out, I can feel a little like indentation and there was a hole in the sole. So these boots did not go nearly as high as we anticipated. However, they're fry boots. It was something that was definitely fixable. I disclosed it in the description and they still did sell for $35, and they were only listed a couple of weeks. So still kind of a win, given that we only paid $7 for it, but we were expecting a little bit more. Karen grabbed this vintage Pioneer, I keep calling it a Pioneer Woman vest, but it's really not. It's, it's just, I think it's just the Pioneer brand. I don't, and it is like leather and suede and all the things. It has the original hardware and it is in a size 16. But let me tell you, I could not close that sucker over my girls. So I think it's like really vintage where the sizes were a whole lot smaller and a whole less vanity sizing than we've got 
in today's day and age. So um, anyway, she paid only $2 for this at a yard sale and we were able to sell it for $22. This one was listed about three weeks before it sold. This Pottery Barn Kids um, duvet cover has been listed several months. This is actually from Karen's own closet. My nephew wasn't going to use it anymore. Pottery Barn Kids sheets sell like hotcakes. So I really expected that this was gonna move a lot faster than it did, but it hung around. However, it's gone. Um, like I said, it came from Karen's closet, so there was zero cost of goods, which is always nice, um, and it sold for $21. Okay, at the polo sale, the vintage polo sale, where I got the umbrellas and where I got the scarves, that's where I picked up this pair of brand new Cole Haan Shelby white loafers. They look like your classic penny loafers or driving loafers. In a smaller size, it was in a six and a half, but they were brand new and in the box. They sold within two weeks of having listed them for $18 and I paid $3.50 for them at the estate sale. I grabbed this um, vintage Woolrich new with tags men's bathrobe at an estate sale um, a couple of months ago and it took me a while to list it. It's in a size large, really beautiful. It's in a really soft and warm fabric and the fabric is a deep maroon color that has these, um, these deer head details on the robe. So like I said, it still had the tags on and it was in a size large. I paid three bucks for it at the estate sale and it sold for $40. I've been looking through my spreadsheet, seeing what's sold, um, how much of things have sold, just trying to get an idea of what I should keep on picking up and what I really probably need to throttle back on, <laughs> Matilda Jane. Um, and one of the things that came really clear looking at my spreadsheet was Torrid is a seller. Torrid doesn't sell terribly high, but it sells consistently. Um, and when I looked back over 2022, like every couple of days I was selling something by Torrid. So absolutely going to be much more intentional about, about picking up Torrid going forward. I know that I have turned it down recently, just thinking, oh, I'm trying to get away from clothes. I'm, I don't want to take, take home as many clothes because it's so labor intensive to get it listed. Um, but I'm going to be rethinking that because the Torrid for us has a fabulous sell through rate. So this red velour full zip hoodie is in a size two. Torrid does vanity seat sizing that's converts over to a size two X. Um, and I paid only $2 for this out of yard sale and it sold for $16. It sold quick. It sold within a few weeks of having posted it. I grabbed this Avon soap on a rope. It's vintage, new and in the package, still sealed in the plastic. I paid a dollar a piece and then I lotted them up together. So I'm all in $2 and this sold fast. Just a couple of, like I wanna say a couple of days. It might've even been overnight, but it was super fast after having listed it and it sold for $18. I picked up this pair of Cole Hans at a yard sale for only two bucks. They were in really, really good condition. I almost left them, but then I thought, you know what? The leather is really soft. There's not a lot of wear that's evident on them, and they're a decent size. They're a size nine, and I'm really glad I did. They sold within just a couple of days of having listed them. Um, like I said, I paid two bucks for them, and they sold for $20. Karen picked up these 1999 new with tags stuffins that are sold in CVS or were sold in CVS. And they are the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer characters. Now we had seen um, Kayla the homeschooling picker. She had done one of her videos and featured where she had picked up, I want to say it was a complete set at a yard sale and sold it for big bucks. Now this was only four of them. But she only paid $5 for all four of these and we sold them for $44. So even having a partial set, it still sold for what I would consider a really decent profit. Okay, a couple of weeks ago at a yard sale, I got a bag of Polly Pocket stuff and it was like little accessories like a cat and a bunch of those little teeny tiny Polly Pocket dolls. I have parted them out and I have been selling them for between $10 and $12 a pop. And so I took this little $2 bag of plastic and it's just been steadily coming in. I just sold another one the other day. So definitely don't pass by those toys 
I've learned from watching other YouTubers that it is well worth it to get on your hands and knees and dig through bins because you never know what you're going to find. So the first one that sold is this fairy Ella. She is from 93. Maybe I'm 75 cents into her. She sold for $12. And then immediately following her, this also 1993 ballerina with the tutu. And the, having the tutu was important because there were a bunch of them that were listed without the tutu. And she sold for $12. And then since then, I have sold four others. So I'm really making bank on this. And I think I have three more listed. I have one more princess doll. I have a bicycle and then a um, cat. And the bicycles, these little teeny tiny bicycles, I almost threw them away because I didn't know what they were. And then I, when I flipped it on the bottom, I saw BBT, Bluebird Toys. And I thought, oh, I'm glad I didn't throw that away. So really take the time to just, I'm not saying do every single little accessory you see, but if something catches your eye, just flip it over. Look and see if you can see, you know, any markings or anything that'll give you some information because some of those action figures and dolls and playthings are super valuable. I picked up this pair of Kamek bullish waterproof hiking boots. I picked them up mostly because they had the Vibram on the sole. They were in a size eight and a half. I paid $3 for them at a churchyard sale and they sold for $20. This Wedgwood nativity scene ornament, I picked up at an estate sale for only a dollar and it sold for $32. Never know with ornaments. Some of these ornaments that I'm picking up, I'm like saddled with and I can't give them away. And then others just really completely take me by surprise. I've listed Wedgwood Christmas ornaments before. I have some others listed and they're not going anywhere. This Yadro Surprised Kitty was a figurine that I picked up at a yard sale. I have been watching Texas Gal Treasures. She talks about always looking at the figurines, especially any like animals or things like that because she said they, a lot of them will surprise you with their resale value. So I knew Yadro. I mean, Yadro is a great brand. Only $3 for Yadro. I looked it over really carefully. No chips, no crazing, nothing. So that was a no-brainer. And then he ended up selling for $22 in only two weeks. Can I grab this Dymo Labor Writer? It is the $400 um, at Goodwill for $4.99. I don't know a lot about label writers, thermal printers, things like that other than the one that I have. And mine is not a Dymo. So I didn't really know a lot going into it, but I know how to do comps. And so the comps looked really decent. So this was only listed about a week and a half before we took an offer of $98. I love to pick up cross stitch. Some of them will sit for forever. My kind of my rule of thumb is no more than a dollar. Typically I get them for 50 cents. This one in particular is a 1988 dimensions counted cross stitch kit and it is of Victorian houses. I paid only a dollar for it at an estate sale and it sold quickly within three or four days for $12. This is another Wedgwood item, not a Christmas ornament. This is a set of four canap plates, canape plates. I have literally no couth, so four little plates. I wanna say they were like eight inch plates and they kind of had a New Year's theme working. New and in the package, I paid only $3 for them at a yard sale and they sold for $30. I had them listed for 36, I took an offer of 30. And then the last item, oh, I loved this item. This is for a sized medium Michael Simon sequined nativity scene sweater. Gorgeous, it really was pretty, just very unique. And I know Michael Simon is a good brand, so as soon as I saw that on the sweater, I was doing a little happy dance. Um, I paid only $3 for it and it sold for $75. I think I had it listed for about $100, $105. So I took an offer of $75 because it was starting to creep up on Christmas and I didn't really want to be saddled with it after Christmas. I know Christmas sells year round, but there are some things that I feel like they're going to be more inclined to buy before Christmas. I don't know. I don't know if that logic is sound or not, but it's worked for me and it's helped me to move stuff. Okay guys, let's go to the totals. 31 items, I paid $75.99 for them, making my average cost of goods $2.45. I sold everything for $1,004 even. If you back out 13% of fees of $130.52, that leaves me with a net profit of $797.49. So a little bit higher than typical for 30 items for me. 
Um, but hey, it was Q4. Okay guys, that is everything for this What's Sold video. Hopefully, hopefully, I will be back this weekend with another um, Thrift With Me video if the you know yard sale and gods comply this week. Um, as always, please hit the subscribe button if you like this kind of content, and I will catch you next time. Bye guys!